Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. I'm That's doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah. I I saw something today. Yeah. And it was funny because I saw I was seeing the trailer, like mm-hmm. Like bits and clips, and then I saw you send out a tweet about it, saying how it's the <laughs> first time in years a, a trailer for an M Night Sh- Shyamalan movie has you interested. <laughs> <laughs> Would um, you explain why? <laughs> uh, that was a different will. That wasn't me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I um, no. The tweet I sent it out today was the Transformers One trailer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now I might have uh, now I may have retweeted something from our show account about M Night. Okay, or... I think that's where I got it confused. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. This this is the uh, this is the one the, um with uh, Josh Hartnett, right? Yeah. 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 Which I haven't seen the trailer. I've heard people talk about this, and it's uh, what's it? It's called Trapped, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about it, and I hear that the, the 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 usual M Night twist is actually dropped in the trailer. Whereas I guess it's like, I guess the premise is the uh, Josh Hartnett's character is taking his daughter to uh, essentially a Taylor Swift concert, <laughs> and, and they like lock down the arena to, because he's like a they're looking for a serial killer, and he turns out to be the serial killer. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds interesting. I probably will check it out. I haven't watched M Night movie in forever, so even though maybe that's why I like re- retweeted that, that thing. Also, <laughs> I did, that did capture my sentiment. <laughs> you know, now that you broke down what actually happens, yeah. I will be honest. My interest is less peaked. <laughs> well, see, they, okay. they gave. Yeah, but the thing is, they gave they gave the premise away, so you know there's going to be some other twist that's going to happen. Exactly, in this exactly. Yeah. It's it's not. They didn't give away. They definitely are withholding a card because, yeah. I mean, tr- we've already talked at length about how trailers ruin things, and yeah. I don't think that they're going to let this trailer completely ruin it by telling you the premise like you have to understand and and i totally understand why like that premise you have to understand like that is the gist of the movie so how else are you supposed to be like okay so this is the gist of the movie without saying that (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) so so yeah there 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 has to be something else but huh probably one i can wait until dvd (laughs) (laughs) TV. Yeah. Um, and I did see majority of the Transformers one trailer, which um which just looks like fun. It looks yeah. like a good good old time with um some of the voices we love, like uh like Chris Hemsworth mm-hmm. and Brian Tyree. Yep. Yeah, yeah. This was uh yeah, Scarlett Johansson's also she's Alita One. Um and uh was it Keegan Keegan Michael Kale? I remember I'm butchering his name, but I think he's Bumblebee. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I really, what was, what was cool about this trailer is, you know, one, it does look like good fun, but also just the whole like thing that Paramount did with the marketing of like showing the trailer from a weather balloon from space. <laughs> They're like, they must have like gone to Tom Cruise and it's like, Tom, you're not in this, but do you have an idea for like a, a trailer that you would like to do one day? And, and Tom was probably like, oh, yeah, we'll love to do a weather balloon from space. But unfortunately, you know, I guess they had, he wasn't available for for this film. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, but it looks a lot of, like a lot of fun. I remember, um, you know, sort of the, or, the origin story of uh, Optimus Prime and Megatron. And uh, a, a lot of old heads may remember the Generation One um, cartoon that did have the Op- Optimus Prime origin story of, as far as when he was Orion Pax. And uh, also Alita One was also in that. Uh, and D-16, who was Megatron's pre- predecessor and when they're, they're buds and stuff. So it's a lot of good fun. And I mean, for I will say I was I was I was talking last night with our uh, friends over at A-plus, uh, uh, Adam Perez, uh, about this trailer. 
looking forward to for it today and i was like you know the nostalgia in me was like i'm a whole judgment and then i saw it today and i was just like oh yeah this looks like a lot of fun i i i definitely like the vibe that it's given off for sure fallout has been okay. renewed for a second season on amazon and um which will be starting the first season uh next week so be on the lookout for that if you've already started it um, we're going to tackle the first two episodes and um, and nothing more. <laughs> <laughs> nothing more. Yeah, so gonna, so yeah. we will see if that show is for us. Yep. Yep. I've heard a lot of good things about it. So and clearly Amazon is, is very excited about the uh, watch time and everything because they did get a second season renewal. Yep. And um, if you had a chance, last week we did bring this up, the unfortunate passing of Chance Perdom- Perdomo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he had uh, Michael Rosebaum's um, Inside of You podcast dropped a um, his, his last interview that he had with Chance um, prior to the passing. So, so if you're interested, please check it out. Um, and again, all condolences go out to his family and friends. Yeah, yeah, it was it was um, really, really. If you're a fan of his, uh, definitely recommend you go check it out. It real learned a lot about. I didn't know much about his background prior to to um, Michael's um, interview with him and and all. But uh, he he was it, it was a very um, there was a lot of heartfelt moments in there and some things that that he was able to do in his time before before his untimely passing uh that uh you know definitely pulls out the heartstrings and um yeah he just seems like a really 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 cool dude and uh yeah it's just going going too soon definitely yeah. all right so. that brings us to shogun episode nine um the second to the last episode crimson sky uh, and the synopsis on imdb reads mariko arrives at osaka for the fight of her life blackthorn and yabushige scramble to save their own heads as their options dwindle will what did you think about this episode wow so i know last week i i was like, said that as of that moment episode eight it was my favorite episode but uh, this episode probably <laughs> next week i'll probably say next week's gonna be my favorite but this one really was one that just one of those things that when you watch anna soi's performances marco you're just like okay give her the hardware i mean it was a a real defining performance that she uh, gave in this episode as far as the episode itself um i really did like it a lot uh one of the things i thought about was something we talked about maybe it was episode five or i think was that the one where we see lady oshiba coming back to uh osaka castle i think so and, yeah and we were you know one of the things i had noted was you know, these were the two pow- powerful women in japan and i can't i thought about that again watching this episode uh and the sense of power you know there's the belt there's the hard exercise of power and then something Anna so I uh, mentioned in an interview uh, that I was reading about right literally right before we uh, recorded tonight about uh, how sometimes it's just that quiet power that that inner power that uh, a person has and I'm paraphrasing but I, I thought about our conversation where we had that and that really was on display in this in this episode with Mariko uh, she's we you know we definitely get more context as far as her backstory you know with the flashback uh we see uh, we learn really how what tornaga had in store for for his with his plan as far as how he was going to utilize her and um and you know and 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 also just how she and we've seen this throughout her straddling her role as a samurai as well as her, her Christian faith and how all that sort of was sort of a guiding post and, and, and that, and again, just the uh, eightfold fence coming up again. Uh, it was just so many things that, you know, what a good penultimate episode does is pull all these things that we've seen throughout the season, bring all those storylines together into to one big moment. And, and that 
did happen in this episode. Are you, so I've brought this up to you before. Um, yeah. And so after this episode, do you th- still think it's only going to be one season? Yes. Okay. I do. Yeah. I mean, there's no, I mean, unless, oh, I mean, because this is inspired by real events. So, yeah, could they do a second season going into the next phase of Japan's history? Yeah, they could. But at least with this story and, and this period in Japan's feudal past, yeah, um, this story will, it will, we will, con- it will conclude with next week's episode. Interesting. Okay. They could they if the if FX is like well we're, we're really killing it with the numbers and they like force a, a second season but again it will be a, a a new story it wouldn't be this one this this story is contained to this yeah 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 what were your thoughts of the episode it it was good I mean yeah. what else am I gonna say um yeah so we get a brief flashback about mariko 14 years earlier she tries to escape while pregnant that's when she meets father alvito who seriously has a crush on her (laughs) and has had one for 14 years and he gives her the cross and that guides her so that's the only flashback um in this episode this is a mary this is mariko very heavy episode um because it and it starts with her and it ends with her as um um so the Toronaga's plan with Mariko was to send her to Osaka to um to pick essentially pick up his his ladies his ladies mm-hmm. um and bring them back to where he is um and basically calling the bluff that um, Ish- Ishido and Ochiba are holding all of the noble um, families hostage in Osaka right now, and 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 calling that bluff, and so everything escalates, and Mariko refuses to not be allowed to return to her 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 lord, um, as is her mission. We were wondering what Tornago was really up to. I mean, that's sort of been like, you know, I think you know, whenever we've talked about this the show and figuring out what his overall big picture plans and, and what was because Mar- I think as we left things kind of like in the last week, we, we were wondering was was Marco goes on the on the journey yeah, and and of course Tornaga smartly doesn't tell Blackthorn or Yabashige like what is what is tr- true mission or true true aim is here. And and it really does, bas- you know, basically it forces like Shido's ha- hand uh, as far as what his what his true thing is there because I mean if 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 everybody's truly a prisoner then he if everybody's truly guest then people can come and go and she's like and that's what she did she's like look you know I I we're rolling out of here. And, and it's like, but wait a minute, you don't have a permit, all that kind of stuff. Whenever you know, whenever I had that moment there in the, and whenever they have the audience there in the, in the regents chamber and stuff. So, what was really interesting too about that regents scene was where, how he was just kind of talking down to Mariko, which is very interesting given their 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 stations because I mean she is samurai class, whereas he was a peasant who just worked his way up was lucky enough to work his way up to being a being a regent and stuff so you know it was really interesting just sort of seeing sort of that that how she dealt with that uh those you know basically insults given that really you know she you know she comes from a you know higher higher class in, in their society and stuff so i mean it was i was i was just really just edge of my seat really just enjoying this sort of watching all this all this stuff play out so so yeah she she, they they have that standoff and then she tries to leave she fails to leave and and then she decide then she says okay because i cannot return to my lord i'm gonna commit suicide um and kill myself and and the whole ceremony that we've seen before now a few times play out and um but then Ishido 
decides to say, okay, no, here are your permits. And, um, and then, so she's allowed to leave. They, and then the, Yabashige, because while this is going on with Mariko, in the background, there's, there's an offer where Yabashige has to, in order to make amends with Ishido, he has to let some assassins into Osaka. And they're after Mariko. And then she sacrifices herself. If she's dead, I, I strongly believe she is. Um, I think it'll be very strange if she's alive in the last episode, but stranger uh, things have happened. Mm-mm. She's dead. I mean, that's, I mean, I, I mean, again, these are all inspired by true events. I mean, this is where, I mean, the, her, her true life counterpart also, um, died. did die, uh, in a, and, and also in the original source material, I mean, pretty much the, this show stayed, stayed true to the source material. The only difference is my understanding is, uh, in the, in this version, she uses her her father's surname versus in the in the book he she uses uh Bantaro's surname Toda uh but otherwise everything pretty much played out how 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 things unfolded both um um uh, in the source in the in the Clavel's book but also I think pretty true to life as well as far as the uh, person, in regards to America as far as America as far as how yeah, how yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so if, I, if I'm going to really nitpick and overanalyze yeah. and things, which sometimes I don't feel like I can with this show because you, you, I feel like you know a lot more about the history and the, what happens in the book and, and all that stuff. So I'm always like hesitant to say what I'm really thinking just yeah, because I'm like, well, yeah, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I don't really care about that stuff. I'm just say, taking the story how I get it. But so... <sighs> I think where I struggle with yeah. this is that I wasn't really surprised by anything. No, <laughs> like, I wasn't. Either. I was surprised that they killed her just because, but at the same time, I wasn't, I wasn't mad about it. It mm-hmm. wasn't like, oh my God, you just killed the best character on the show. That is Yabu Shige. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I stand by that. <laughs> no, it just made sense that yeah, yeah. that she would sacrifice herself not for love, not for anyone anything else other than her loyalty to Toronaga and her her desire to bring some sort of um respect back to her name after all this time. So she died exactly how she wanted to. And it and it made made complete sense. And this whole episode, all of her actions. So, in a way, with Toranaga, like he he's. I think if we go back a few episodes, and there's that conversation about Buntaro wanting to um, wanting to kill Blackthorn. But he can't. But he can't kill his wife. And then, or or but and then Tornaga says, "Well, then why don't you kill her too? Mm-hmm. Because they're both guilty." And so there's this whole exchange. And then after that conversation, Tornaga essentially asks her, "Well, what she wants?" And she says, "Tells him." And I think from there, that's planted the seed of that eventually to using her in this way. Um, granted, I don't think. I don't necessarily think it was fully his plan to have her die, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but, but it still works in his favor in the long run, especially probably some of the more subtle, subtle parts of this that were interesting. Um, and just other reminders is that this, this game, this pol- political game is so much more bigger than, Toronaga versus Ishido because of the other councilmen who are loyal, who are Christian and loyal to the Spanish. And so you see Mariko very wisely try to make pleas to these men 
based on their religious beliefs. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, and so I like that. I, I thought that was a clever thing to, to put in there as a reminder about how, like, yet at the same time, that, that religious part of it makes all of this death and suicide very, very much harder for them to, to allow and accept and be yeah, aligned. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good, that's a very good point. I mean, I think thinking back, you're right. I mean, that I think for me, the death was earned. You know, that it, you're right. I mean, it, it was it was it was it was building towards this. I mean, that that was sort of her. You know, she wanted to go out on, on her own terms. I mean, and and I and I and I like the way you brought the Portuguese you know, with the coming back to to the bigger global picture because. They saw what was going on, what, what Toronaga was was doing. Um, you know, whenever you think with the when 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 Father Lubito and the other 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 uh, priests were talking, I mean, they were like, they caught on to the ruse. What, what that what, what was Toronaga's Toronaga's plan? And and so, what plan? His plan to leave Osaka? No, his plan. His his. his willing seemingly willingness to give up or like this doesn't this doesn't job mm. because i mean i think you know because because martin at least the older the older priest father Avito was like well wait a minute blackthorn you know he's you know he let him go and right, right. and yeah and, and and so i think he was still thinking like you know he was sort of like in the camp of where ashido was because you know, I think he, he was was thinking, which is, yeah, he's going to show up and he's going to he's going to surrender and you know, with the impeachment and and and, and meet his fate. But That's the others, what Shido can do. Yeah. Like like he he has to like one way or another, based on their culture, yeah. Tornanga is going to end up in Osaka, and Shido knows that. It's just a matter yeah. of time and waiting. Yeah. Yeah. So, but but I don't know what. Ishido's plan is for like okay when that happens and the longer it takes him what's what what's your plan here <laughs> yeah really? well Shido was thinking okay you know, he was thinking the long game of well not the long game but he was thinking of like he, he was coalescing his power because you know, he proposes to Lady Oshiba so and of course what now was he going to do that so he could like kill the air and and or because i mean that's typically what you know whenever you have these situations you know if there's like the you know the the, the, the air the consort and mm -hmm. and the and the you know the taiko's son you know the idea would normally would, would take them out and and of course we see you know, ishido is you know he, he uses he uses Yabushige to, you know, to do his dirty work so he can kind of keep his hands off of it. Um, so it's not, it just looks like, oh, you know, Yabushige is the, the, the willing fool who's like so busy trying to like play the angles and, you know, see which way the wind's blowing. So even though at the beginning of the episode, Yabushige is like, what's that? How dare you call him a fool? He is not a fool. <laughs> he is a survivor. Okay. Yeah. The man <laughs> is just like, yeah, I I need to get on the right side of things, depending yeah. on like he he's pretty good. But I also love nobody's letting him in on, on their plans. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I think at the end of the day, yeah. what this episode really shows is is just how much like Mariko, Blackthorn, Yabushige, the other councilmen, all of these other people are pawns. Yeah. Like they 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 really are yeah. just pawns on this chessboard and you have two people. Now, I don't know if it's a hundred percent Ishido because because I, I I think there's some consistency issues with his character. And so I don't know if it's Ishido and Oshiba, but them two versus Toronaga and how they they use these people to get what they want yeah. um, at the end of the day. Yeah. So, um, well, 
Yeah. Well, I think too, you know, Tornaga at the end of the day, he doesn't want power. I mean, he, you know, and if he just really, his, his mission is to make sure to follow the will of the Taiko, which is get my son to the age of majority so he could take over and avoid war at all costs. And then, you know, he, but he, he uses Ashido's ambitions against him because he knows that like, if, if Marco is 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 killed, then all the other regents and all the other samurai are going to rise up against him because against Ashido, that is, because you know because at, at all along they've, they've he's put this ruse out there that oh no everybody here in Osaka Castle is is well is is free to go and they're not prisoners they're not hostages. But at the same time, but if but if he lets everybody go, if 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 Shido lets everyone go, he loses all leverage that he's that he's ma- maintained throughout this time. So, you know, so Tornaga is definitely you know he uses Marco and, and 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 to your point that you you, you raised about Mariko's pain, think you know things that she's carrying on as far as what she wants. You know, Tornaga smartly uses that to 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 to, to force these events that have happened up to this point. And of course, you know, things do go sideways where he probably didn't foresee, but, um, but at the end of the day, I mean, he is that we're, we're going to get the Tycho's will carried out as far as his son being, you know, the next leader and things going peacefully, you know, to, you know, to, to the, to the next period in, in Japan's history. Um, were you thrown off by Ochiba in this episode at all in her reaction to Mariko? Um, not, not really. I mean, I think, you know, some of the things we discussed in the, in, in the past, um, you know, I think she was pretty consistent with what, how she, how she views, views things. Um, and I, and I know she, you know, she used the ruse of, wanted to talk to Blackthorn um to to get those to get to to have that conversation with with Mariko but um yeah I, you know I think it was you know she she used her childhood as as a way to maybe try to convince her to 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 see things her way but you know I, I, I it, it to me it seemed consistent with what she's been doing all along yeah yeah, I I just I thought she would be a little bit more mad at her considering mm. her dad killed her dad. So yeah, yeah, no, no, that's a good point. Yeah, no. <laughs> then again, she's directing all. I I guess that's mainly why I felt as though it was tr- they tried to convey that both Tornaga and Mariko are allies because of Ochiba's mutual hatred for them, but it didn't seem that way. Granted, that kind of makes sense considering they grew up like sisters together. So it's yeah. just, I was I was a bit thrown by her initial reaction to Mariko um, <laughs> and her desire to, what it felt like, want to see Mariko live, mm-hmm. but also understanding the politics like yeah there is no alternative um but but yeah it it definitely did not set them up for success um next episode yeah but But she did seem yeah but she did seem i guess she did seem a little sad though when mark you know whenever they she basically marco was like no i'm gonna let fate my fate is is what it is uh so yeah. i guess there was there was a little bit of sadness there it felt like a plea for no you gotta you yeah. gotta choose differently you can't remain loyal to, loyal to toranaga yeah um and then the last person who we haven't really talked about at all is blackthorn yeah how well does he know japanese he seems to have picked up quite a bit. <laughs> sometimes. I mean, sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, but he did say keep it simple. And there was, you know, he, he did say still, and there's some, still some phrases and stuff in, in one part of the episode, but he has, he, he ha, I guess he, he's, he's learned enough not to like inadvertently get old, old men killed. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, 
I go back and forth on how much he knows and what he doesn't. But then again, just because you know the language doesn't mean dialect wise right. yeah. or even how people talk. Like languages can change based on just suddenly, oh, they're from a different region and they talk in a different way or they they mumble their words more. So it's just harder. So right. I just. I question it a bit because it seemed like in some scenes he he knew what was going on and some scenes he had no idea what was going on. And I'm just like, OK, well, they're well, not they don't seem to be using too hard of words. <laughs> yeah, well, I think but also it's context clues as well. I mean, I just think about. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, just think about how we may come across the language or I mean, I like for, for I just use myself as an example, like in, in my house, in my own household, I, mean, I don't know. I don't speak Tamil. But I've picked up a, a, enough words and phrases um, where, if my if my wife and and say or some of her if her family's here or whatever, you know I could kind of between context clues and and other things kind of pick up where they're coming from. It just a little bit of language that I have picked up. <laughs> so I think Blackthorn's done a similar thing where he's just sort of like. Like you said, some situations he does seem to know more than others. Um, and, you know, and, and I would think about the scene that he and Yabashige had together where they were like, they they they, 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 they muddled through in both of them. Because, I mean, yeah, you know, on the flip side, Yabashige was just like, you know, he, you know, he, he was having, he he could figure out where Black, what Blackthorn was saying to him through this, through context clues. So, uh, yeah, but you're right. I mean, uh, there's some places where it seemed to be, he seemed to be better off than others. Well, we just also don't have um, a great perspective on the amount of time that has gone on. Like, yeah. how long has Blackthorn been in Japan? It's, and yeah. so, so it's 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 hard. I'm I get the sense that it's been a while. Yeah. But it also feels a lot shorter just because of like how this show is broken up. So. Well, well, I guess we could take it by seasons because we've had. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So at least at least a year. Right. Maybe longer. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So and 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 we'll see. We'll see. I I I do appreciate how the just how much Blackthorn he, he he's the hero, but he's not the hero. He's yeah. more of like the viewer's avatar into mm -hmm. this world because it's a western audience for the main main part so yeah so it's just it it's i i appreciate how they utilized him in comparison to similar stories that we've seen in the past and how um his character type has been used so yeah yeah i will say whenever like whenever he stepped in whenever uh marco was what was going wanted to commit seppuku and and none of the, you know the the Christian priest the Christian regent who said he was going would be her second didn't show up, and when Blackthorn did step up, that's I literally pointed at the screen and I was like he gets it he finally you know that's he finally I think he finally recognized bigger context everything what what she's been trying to to convey to him all this time and also just their and, and also their love for one another. Uh, both in a in a Western sense that he has for her, but also in 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 a, in a feudal Japan cultural sense too. That where he's like, I get it, and I got to step in for her to do this. Um, I thought that was a very powerful moment in the episode as well. You didn't see the cut scene where Ishido said that he was going to disrupt the ceremony and give the permit. <laughs> I missed that scene. I missed that one. <laughs> okay. Because I'm pretty sure that's what happened. <laughs> that's what happened. But prior to, but but it, yeah, it was. Now I will say, if you know, to your point about nitpicking, uh, it, it was very convenient that that's where I, yeah, I was like, oh, okay, we're we're getting the convenience <laughs> built in. There here. were so many there's convenient some, there's some, there, things. There's some plot that. armor happening here. Yeah. There were so many convenient things. I did yeah. not buy it for one second that she was actually going to end up having to do yeah. it. Yeah. Um. I was just like, oh, okay, come on, come on. Yeah. What What is What is gonna conveniently disrupt this? But yeah. then it, it allows you to get to the explosion at the end. So yeah, there were yeah, yeah the the plot armor 
the plot armor was there. It's like the first set of plot armor was whenever she was trying to leave the castle. <laughs> the second was, yeah, the, that scene. And then the third, yeah, the plot armor is like, okay, we're taking the plot armor off. But uh, but at the end, it was, to me, it, it was an earned death. And, and so um, it, you know, it, it, it worked. Yeah. In, her, in, her, in, the, in the whole context of the story. Yep. And we shall see next week if they earn their ending um, or if Tornanga will, will earn his ending, whatever it shall be. Yep. Um, and that leads us to the end of Three Body Problems with episode seven and eight. Three Body Problem, episode seven, only advance. Uh, the synopsis is a bold proposition for the staircase project puts the group at odds. Will weighs his option. Yi returns to a familiar place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I am, I am so glad you told me last week. Like I feel as though you t- you prepared me for these two episodes. Huh. Um, just because you. you told me this is one of three books, <laughs> 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 and there will be a cliffhanger, and so. So I was fully, I was fully already prepared mentally. Okay, we're gonna get a cliffhanger. Nothing's gonna be. And I have to say, overall, I'm very satisfied mm. with this ending. Yeah, me too. Have I thought about it since watching it? No, <laughs> not the <a> damn <laughs> moment. <laughs> was I like, okay, this is cool? Yes, particularly because we called a lot of this shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> The moment they were talking about the person to go on the on the ship and and it eventually leads to, oh, but we only need the head. We only need the brain. Mm-hmm. And then and then it's like immediately it was like, oh, they're going to use Will because he's almost dead. Yep. <laughs> so, it was so funny to me. I'm just like. Damn it, me and Will put that out in the universe, and that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> we did. I was like, oh, like I thought about our, yeah, thought I thought about our conversation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just, I mean, we didn't predict like it would only be his brain, no, but, but how could you? You said it. I remember. I was like, I as I was watching the episode, I, I was like, man, I should go back and check the timestamp for when Sarah said they're gonna Will's gonna go out and just blast it out into space. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it just so happened. Will now brain only. Don't really know if that counts, but it's still, it's yeah. still will. Jin thinks it counts because she still uh, yeah. thinks that he's alive in a way. Yeah, yeah. I think that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's one of the things I have liked about this series. Um, just it, it does. You know, it's those scientific um, and those science fiction things that 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 come up in in a lot of good science fiction as far as like what's the soul. You know, is the brain, is, is it just the brain? Is it, you know, this, is it still function? I know they were trying to do some like techno babble stuff about, you know, freezing the body, you know, with the, with, when they were dealing with the, um, the cryo with the ape, uh, with the chimp, mm-hmm. um, you know, the CGI chimp. Yep. Yeah. The CGI chimp. Yep. Yeah. Uh, which was actually, was it was, it was pretty yeah. decent CGI chip, but, uh, I, I did not like it. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a planet of the creepy, but, uh, but yeah, just the, the, the existential questions that this series has, like, and I guess, the, and, and by extension, I'm, I'm sure the, the, the book brings up and I think does carry forward in this series to, um, what's what are you know with when what is our soul and and you know when, when will and saul are there in the hospital and you know i liked how they didn't use they use saul you know we talked about how saul is sort of is us the avatar for the audience as well and you know how he's been utilized up to this point in the series and he was just running through all the the what ifs with will like you know what if they find you and they you know, fall you out and they do x you know the xyz with you but the thing i appreciated about that scene is he he didn't he put all those things out there but he still left it up to will to decide right right yeah if he Saul has definitely been a character 
a supporting character. Um, but what, but we get our payoff in episode eight with Saul in it yeah. to an extent. Yeah. And, um, and I agree with you, like, this is what, sci- this is an example of what science fiction does best is it really allows a deep rooted, um, a deep rooted allegory metaphor to come out and for you to really think about spiritual stuff mm-hmm. um, along with the the science. Um, so, so it's, it's, it's really interesting. Um, I was going to ask about something else. So, so yeah, we, we predicted with uh, will going into space, which he does. Yep. yep. Um, that's what I was going to ask about, but Tatiana shows up in this episode. Yeah. Haven't seen her in a while. She shows yeah. up in this episode a few times because by the end of it, she shows up in China and who else is in China? Well, Wenji mm-hmm. and her, her stalker, <laughs> <laughs> her tail. <laughs> and, and she, Wenji decides to go back and return to her, her old work site. Yeah. And, and that is where Tatiana um, appears on and, and the end of this episode is essentially them looking at the sunset. So, so what did you think about a, the, the fact that they killed Wenji mm-hmm. and B, they killed her off screen. As far as her going to China with both with Tatiana returning, she it is i i looked at this whole segment of win and evans and sort of the i guess the the the, the foundation of, of of the santi cult for and and so they're the first generation of the of the acolytes for the santi and i think with with win going back it, it it was one of those things i i felt like it was one of two things Either she was did not get an answer from um, it was a directive from the gods who have cut her off, or it was a situation where it was she she has lost she's lost faith in this. So 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 yeah. is that why they killed her? Um, I don't, so. Because I wasn't, I was surprised that they ended up killing her and I was surprised, more surprised that they killed her off screen. Well, I think the off screen was, to me, uh, that didn't bother me so much because I think she had, at least in Tatiana's eyes and and, and it was, she had fulfilled her purpose. She, she, She was, she was the, you know. When Jay and Evans basically were like the emissaries that brought that opened yeah. the door and 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 you know and, and and you have all these acolytes now and you have all these followers with the first generation with Tatiana, but then of course, you know, we see others as well um that that didn't get captured when they had the raid way back at the beginning of the, of the series. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> in the middle so, of the season. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> was it way back in the beginning? Yeah, I guess it was episode three. Yeah. I but were you so yeah. so you 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 were you or were you not surprised that they killed her? I I saw it coming. I, I was like yeah. when she when she showed up when she went back to China, I was like, Yeah, this is it. She's she's done either. Yeah. Um and I kinda like that yeah. we don't know for sure if because we do know she reached out to the Santi yeah. in the very last episode, but we don't know what the response was. So we don't know if this was a command from them for her to return there or if she just went there knowing I didn't get a response. I'm going to return to where this all started and mm-hmm. they'll kill me there. Like, yeah. <laughs> Because she knows that if she buys, like, they know where she'll be. Like, yeah. she understands how they work. So, so she, I think she even took it. And, and also, it, it, it's also just her being like, I did what I did. Yeah. I can't make this right. There's nothing yeah. I can do. 
I so so yeah. If they need to kill me, then here I am. Let's yeah. let's let's well, take well, it see, back I, to where I I started. Yeah. See, I don't know if it was a thing where they wanted to. That's just it. I don't know if it was a thing where the Sati wanted to kill her. I think it was when Jay just make. I think when Jay took it as that to your point, maybe her mission is over. My, I've that taken this as far as. I, I've taken this as far as, you know, I, she just, you know, she reached out to them and the gods cut her off. And so she just interprets that as, OK, I guess I'm 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 done. Well, or then, then or they she just, just allowed her to kill herself. Like if she, if like I, I understand what you're trying to say, but I don't buy it because Tatiana shows up and we know Tatiana kills her. Right, but I think Tatiana was killed. I think Tatiana's purpose in killing and, and euthanizing her was, a, you know, maybe the Santi were like, you know, and Tatiana says this to her, like, you know, you're, we, we, I'm here to do what the gods want us wants me needs for me to do to you, which, but to, to do it in a in a more humane way of instead of like tossing yourself to the rocks as uh, maybe as a as a uh, as a maybe I don't know want to say thank you or just a a way of Asante saying we you know we here, here here's your, here's the answer we're we're going to you know the, the, they answered your your prayer and and I'm here to take you know to to euthanize you <laughs> um, on on behalf of of, of the Lord. Yeah, I still think they wanted her dead. Well, I mean, I, I know like we, they wanted Evans to die. That, like, like I, I, I don't think you're going to be able to convince me that they didn't. Well, I don't know if I know the answer. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just. I'm just put. I'm just. I don't. I'm not saying I have the answer. And that's just, where I started with this. Like, I, I yeah. like the fact that we don't know for sure about yeah. the true, other than we know the Santi sent Tatiana there. Yeah, that yeah. is yeah, yeah. We'll just, we know that for sure. Um, so so the other thing that's going on during be between Will, besides Will and Wenjay, is Augie and Jin because we are still getting Augie PTSD from Panama, Panama, who's agreed to build the sail for the probe, but is trying to make Jin understand that. That they are, they are not necessarily on the right side of things. Um, the science is being used to create weapons just as much as it's being created to de um, to create defense mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So, which which is a very clever thing to do with science and have that moral moral gray area occur of. Um, uh, of it and it and I think to have Augie in the background throughout this episode express that while Jin inadvertently is leading um leading Wade to Will mm -hmm. like and now her moral compass is fractured because like she not only w only convinces Will to do this he does it for her, mm -hmm. and it, she realizes too late how much he he does he he has loved her. So yeah, so yeah, yeah. I just wanted to bring that up. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's but that's it, 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 it. This episode finally gave us, you know, all, early on, I was like, what's Will's purpose? <laughs> and and obviously beyond you know beyond the obvious reason. That we got here, but also I think, as you noted, it, it definitely uh, raises those philosophical questions as far as what you know that that we see demonstrated between Augie and, and Jen's uh, uh, argument um, it, whenever they were trying to decide how whether or not to, whether or not to ask Will, and 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 so that that really got played out this uh, in, in, in that part of the episode. Yes. <clears throat> yep. 
Yep, that got played out. And and now before we talk about episode eight, Wall Facer, um, there was a conversation between Wenji and Saul in this episode where he t- she tells him a joke. Um, and essentially the premise of the joke is um, we warned you never play with God. Mm-hmm. And and he doesn't understand it. Um but we do understand it when he becomes a wall facer. <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, wh- what did you think about this conversation, Will? Yeah, it, you know, it's one of those things when I, I'll have to say it's a two-part answer. First part, whenever it first happened, I was trying to figure out wh- what the joke was. <laughs> exactly, right? I was sitting there yeah. like, this is A, the longest joke I've ever heard, and B, yeah. it's very funny. <laughs> Yeah, it's not very funny. It was a joke. Um, and then, you know, but um uh, but then, you know, as you said, we we get a better context for why she told the joke the way she did in the, in, in episode eight. So so I, you know, so I, I, I as I noted, I have to be honest, whenever I was watching episode seven, I was just like, okay, where's this going? But mm-hmm. then but then what we we get that answer and and that's why to your point why i was so satisfied with uh one of the reasons why i was satisfied with this first season yeah yeah this like the the only way to watch this show is in epi- in in even episodes mm-hmm. like just just do two at a time because <laughs> yeah. the, yeah. the one episode the odd episodes at answer like set up the questions and the even episode just give you all the answers yeah. <laughs> it's the <laughs> only way to watch this yep. um because because we have that conversation and and i think that conversation occurs like midway through that episode seven because yep. a lot of other stuff happened to both wenji and saul and then we get episode eight, which starts out um, with this bizarre sequence where I'm just like, why are we, why are we, wait a second, Will yeah. just launched himself into space, or Will be launching himself into space. It's very dramatic. We're we're starting episode eight, the final episode of this season, with Will having a conversation with a one night stand, or Saul having a conversation with a one night stand. Is that really what we're doing? But and then it gets more strange when she she randomly gets hit by a car and dies right in front of him. Mm-hmm. And then we realize, well, that was definitely after Saul. Um yeah. because he uh the government has a new plan, which is something else that is mentioned in the previous episode where Wade drops the turn wall facer. Mm-hmm. And um and so I guess my question for you, Will, is yep. when you heard the term wall facer in the seven episode, did did that lead you to think, oh, I, I think this is what's going to happen with that in the next episode? Um, not initially, let's be completely honest. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I learned after the fact. You know, I learned wall facers. I guess is uh, I guess a Buddhist um, mm-hmm. monk uh, praying. You know, praying to a wall or something like that. Um, but yeah, but I didn't make the connection at, at, at first. I just thought, okay, another plan um, that they that they were having. But I didn't tie the two together as far as that the joke <laughs> and. Um, Wendy's joke and 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 what pre- what what we learned what the project is until this episode and then I was like ah okay now everything makes sense yeah because essentially the Sophons cannot read our minds so right. Wade's plan is to have three wall facers mm-hmm. who are allowed to to basically just enact plans without telling people (laughs) yeah yes i don't know how to explain it like that's very loosely that's what they're allowed to do and they have all the world's resources at their disposal but but they also they can't they really can't tell anyone anything because 
that defeats the purpose of being a wall facer. You're 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 only acting. You're not you're not telling um, yeah. your reasons because once you do that, the sofans will know. So well, yeah, the other cool thing about the wall facer thing too mm-hmm. is, you know, thinking now tying it back to tying it back to Winje. Yeah. And and thinking about Saul too, as far as wanting to not be a part of the program, it's very brilliant because people. Again, to your point, they may think you're just doing this ruse to at least, you know, saying I don't want to be a part of it. That just could be like part of the <laughs> part of the deception It's like, I don't you don't know. Uh, it could be used, you know, it could be like your trick to like fool the sofa on <laughs> as far well, as. Well, yeah, that's that's what essentially is yeah. is being thought of throughout this episode yeah. where and Saul it- persistently tells them. I am not a wall facer. I gave up that job. And everyone yeah. gives them the smile of like, oh, oh yeah, sure you did. Yeah, sure you uh-huh. did. Yeah. But maybe then it also, yeah. And, and, but to that, to that, thinking back to Wenjay, maybe, she, you know, I think she did figure, I think she, that was, she figured that out. And maybe that was part of her joke to Saul whenever she was talking about when they were sitting there in the park. Figure uh, it out. She, she, that she need, you know, but, to, to, to speak to him in code because she knows that the Sofan observe everything. Well, right. So I think the, you know. But was her her code good intention or bad intention? That's that's what we'll find out in the seasons two. <laughs> maybe. I yeah. Maybe. I, we, yeah. I have no idea if we're, we're going to ever find out. Cause I don't know. I, I haven't read the book. I'm a little tonight. disappointed yeah. about some of Wenjie's unsolved mysteries, and we're yeah. not even going to go there. But I, Yeah. I mean, I, I, I do know. I haven't read the book. I do understand that some of the events that transpire in this last episode do start do take pl- place in the, the second book. So that that uh, makes sense. There there were yeah. some aspects about this that felt like okay, we're starting a new chapter. Yeah. We're 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 starting something fresh. But um but yeah, so so I I understand w- like the joke could be in, in code and everything. And then be, and I just keep thinking about the question that um, Clarence mainly mainly raises is just or or this experience raises in Saul like why him? Yeah. And then people try to explain to him, well, it's like you'll know it. it like this idea that the Sante essentially chose him because there's a reason why he's important to the Sante. Like, mm-hmm. th- like, and we don't know what that is. And we don't know for sure if potentially or for sure if that started with the conversation in the park with Wenji where she made it clear that he was important. It could have started, like, honestly... The Oxford Five, their mm-hmm. quote unquote importance started before this show even started because, yeah. I mean, they, they've they always been important to Wenji. And let's not forget, she gave the game to Jin. So yep. knowing yep. what would it unfold. And she also helped get her daughter killed. So I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, I was thinking that too. It's just like, you know, Saul. Yeah, Vera was one of Saul's, um, you know, was Saul was one of Vera's like top students. And I think back to their conversations whenever yep. they were figuring out, hey, you know, things are weird. Physics is broken, <laughs> you know, and and, and 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 so that, you know, and, and also the whole chaos, you know, with the three body, you know, celestial body you know, problem that, uh, you know, is part of that that theory. Uh, so, is you know, it all it all starts to. It all starts to come together here, at least um, all these diff- d- disparate parts. But, but I don't I have any answers. Yeah. Saul becoming Bubble Boy next season. Yeah. Just yeah. saying, with all of the threats that are out there. I mean, he he almost died like at least three times in this episode. Yeah, two, yeah. Three times in this episode. Um, just trying to think. Okay, so wall, pun intended. All of this wall facer stuff is happening. 
we also have will being shot off into space. Yep. And um, so so they did they did a thing, very common dramatic thing, where initially because it's what three hundred bombs have to go mm-hmm. off in, yeah. per site to propel. So what they they get through four or five of them. If that, yeah. Without incident, and then and then one of the one of the th- sails lines connecting the probe to the sail breaks. And mm-hmm. suddenly the probe is off course yep. and Will is lost in space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Will is yep. lost in space. Um what what were what were what were your thoughts during that whole sequence? I mean, I, it, it's one of those things where I was like, it's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, too easy. It's, it's too easy. easy. I was like, something's gonna happen here. I mean, it's just it's inevitable. And sure enough, it did. So uh, that one was one of those things. Like, okay, it's kind of t- it's the it's the usual end of the end of the season. You know, best laid plans. What could possibly go wrong? And of course, it did. So yeah, um, uh, you know, I think the bigger I think the bigger what's that? <laughs> they got four hundred years. <laughs> they got four hundred years. Yeah, that's, yeah, and I guess that's and I guess. You know, thinking back to Augie and Jen and their conversation, and even Raj and Jen late in this episode, uh, where they do have that break off conversation, this is like, you know, I, I guess it's like, what's the rush? You've got 400 years. And even Saul, you know, as he was just sort of struggling, you know, whenever he was talking to his hookup, it's like, what's, what's the rush? And, and, I, mean, I was thinking, you know, I was, I was thinking I, I, like, I, I get, yeah. Yeah. I mean, th- there isn't a rush so much as they just allowed their last, their, one of their closest friends to kill himself to yeah. do this. So they wanted to make sure that was worth it. And, yeah. and now his brain is lost in space. So. Yeah. 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 A bit of guilt, a bit, a bit of, of guilt. guilt, a bit of guilt, <laughs> a little bit of guilt. Yeah, but, you know, but it's also, I guess, Will would have wanted that. I mean, I guess he, you know, he found his purpose. Because I guess that was one of the things that I was never really, it was hard for me to get really capture and get on board with that character. But then once he, like, you know, I think back, you know, just to go back to the seventh episode for just a moment, when he, whenever Wade wanted him to sign the loyalty oath. And mm-hmm. and and then once he refused to do so, and, and that convinced Wade, like, oh, yeah, we got a right man. Um, right. So it's just, you know, again, the really well-crafted stories really explore like human drives and motivations and stuff. And that, that came into play here. And even thinking about Saul, I mean, he went from being, you know, questioning, like, you know, why me, you know, Saul being a very like insular, you know, very selfish person, you know, early on than being a good friend to Will. But like when he was, you know, Augie was reaching out to him. You know, he was just, he just let the phone go. We wouldn't answer, you know, he was too busy hooking up and getting high. But, uh, but then it's, of course, at the end of this episode, when he, whenever he was starting to like realize like, oh, it's a bigger thing here. I need to reach out to Augie. And then, you know, of course she, she turned about, so, you know. She, I don't think it was because there's a bigger thing. It was because Jen was talking about like, yeah. you might actually have someone who loves you as much as Will loved me. A E yeah. Augie, yeah. give her a yeah. call, but yeah. but yeah, yeah but that, that relationship won't won't be complete until like the third season. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I guess that's the bigger thing. I mean, just the the bigger you know relationship. Um, you know, there's more. There's more. There are bigger things than just um hooking up and you know getting high. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's, there's yeah. people out there I, that love you and care for you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I thought it was I I I I really like how I really appreciate how th- consistently they've dropped things mm-hmm. and then uh, they've like they've dropped seeds and then like you don't realize that they're watering them and then things come to fruition. Like this whole concept of Wade trying to meet the Santi 400 years from now 
yeah. um, by freezing himself. And and the Santi are aware of that, and they are encouraging him to to make that science work because they want to meet him too, so mm -hmm. they can kill him or so that he can become their pet. Um, so I just I like that antagonist conversation between the Santi and and Wade. Mm -hmm. um, Albeit it was a bit melodramatic, yeah. um, but I, I I like the appreciate the nod of like we know what you're doing and we yeah. hope you succeed because we want to meet you too so you can see us in flesh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, but I like yeah. It was a bit melodramatic, it, you know. It was, but 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 also it was the first time I think we've seen this in this season where Wade actually was like, oh fuck. Oh, absolutely. Because he's he's a man in control. Yeah. Like he he's a man with a plan. He's a man pulling the strings and and for the first time he's not because yeah. there's this the Santi who have more strings than even he can imagine. Yeah. So, uh, I, I will... they, all of these characters yeah. are are being utilized exactly the way they should be. Yeah. And yeah. And there are times when we sit here, we're like, we don't know. What are they doing with this guy? Why, why, why do we care about this? Well, just wait like an episode and a half later and then something will happen and they'll make that person significant. <laughs> 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 Which you can appreciate because there's a lot, like there's a big story happening here that all of, like all of these characters are just a puzzle piece in. So yeah. you can't you can't put all of the pieces together at once. You have to let it let it flow. Albeit sometimes you just get annoyed because you're just like, I don't care right now. I want to focus on this. Yep. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in this episode, we got so much more Clarence. Oh, yeah. um, love love Clarence, who's becoming the somewhat unofficial papa of the of the Oxford Five, um, especially Saul, as he's been hired to be Saul's full-time security guard. And and my only thought to that is, um, did you not remember what happened to Jack? Saul did a horrible job with security. I don't understand why this man <laughs> is still employed. I love him, but don't understand it. Um, and and he has the closing monologue of the of the season um as he he points out how um the bugs bugs don't go anywhere yeah. they are persistent motherfuckers <laughs> <laughs> yep so simple but so profound and i i did make a note i want to say early on in this episode or episode before i'm like the cicadas, like <laughs> they're really going <laughs> full force on this religious metaphor they are. <laughs> as a news report. Yep. <laughs> but no, that was to set up the monologue at the end about the bugs. <laughs> and I'm like, I see you, I see you, and I I I get it. I got it. Oh man. Anything else we want to talk about? Um no, I'm glad I think... to watch this show. I yeah. think we had fun with this. It didn't I will just say um, I had higher expectations that I will admit didn't were not met. Um, but overall, when I look back at this season, it didn't feel like time wasted. Um, it felt it feels like a complete season, a, a, a complete story, arguably. Like, I don't have to watch the next 400 years play out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be fine, but but I'm curious about how 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 what does happen. So if we get a season two, then then good. Um, but yeah, overall, um, not bad, not bad. Yeah, I, I agree. I I, I I I enjoyed this season as well. Uh, I would say as far as as far as if I had to give a, a ranking or eight out of ten, I would say eight, eight out of ten. I mean, I thought it was really 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 good, really solid. Solid show. Yeah, yeah, very solid. Probably give it a six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Yeah, the, the, the back two episodes really helped me rebound because I, I, I would, I, I would say the mid. I was a little like, mm. but yeah, uh, yeah, I would stick to my eight out of ten. That is fair. And on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on Twitter at Will and Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. 
And you can find me there too at SJ Belmont, S J B L M O N T. Please follow our crew on X, formerly known as Twitter, as seen a nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at seen underscore n underscore nerd. And visit our website, www.seenandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>